Tynan has posted his first update blog post Anomaly DLC launching. Let's check it out, builders. So Anomaly seems like it has been doing pretty well for itself. The reviews on Steam are at 90% positive. So it seems like it's received pretty well, but there has been some pretty consistent criticism, both with the price for the amount of content that you got and for some things that this blog is going to address. So let's check it out here. I'm going to just kind of hit the highlights here. If you'd like to read it, I'll have a link to the post down in the comments below. Many players have said they'd like to be able to mix anomaly content into the rest of the game so it feels like it's a less self-contained experience. This is one of my main criticisms. Uh, both before launch and having played it some now, is that once you kicked off Anomaly, it was all encompassing. You hardly got anything else. Like, I was struggling to get people to recruit because I was not getting rated, like, to that level. So I'm happy to see that they received that feedback. They tried to address some of that here, where Tynan talks about how they wanted to start that way because they wanted to show off how much content that the DLC had. And... I'm, I'm a little sketch on that. I do think that the number of entities and stuff is fine. However, if you had to balance the game in, in, in such an overpowered way to quote, show off how much content there is, then you didn't explain it well enough. Like you didn't show people what your value proposition for buying the DLC was going to be. That you had to be like, okay, we, we got them in here. We have to give them all the things right now. We have to push it right in front. Uh, and it was overwhelming. It was quite overwhelming. And they admit that here with, uh, quote, push too far there. Anomaly has tons of content and exposing it too fast was saturating the experience. And it definitely was. It was, um, it overtook everything else. Like even just trying to get my ideology rituals off felt very difficult because I was trying to deal with different anomalies, trying to get ready for other things that I thought was gonna happen, not having enough hands to actually help get ready for it. To address some of these things, they had an update today, and I like these changes. They help a lot. Anomaly content is less dominant by default while the monolith is active. So I don't know what percentage you know that will be, but I'm in my mind, I'd like to see 50, 60, maybe even 70% less just pure anomaly stuff and have some of the other events be able to still take place. Luckily for everyone, they've added sliders to the game settings that let you choose how much anomaly horror events dominate the game. Great, great compromise here. There are a group of people who really, really, really are enjoying this, and that's cool. I'm glad they're li they like the way it is, and they can have it dominate their games, so they will still be happy. And the people that felt it was a bit too much, you can turn that down some. Uh, one of my worries was once I've completed the content a couple times, I didn't see anything so far that I was like, oh yeah, I want that in every playthrough. In fact, the only thing I was thinking is like, man, I'd like this one thing and it sucks that I'm going to have to turn on the monolith to be able to get it into my game. So maybe if I turned it way, way down and so it wasn't dominating the playthrough, I wouldn't have that kind of either or regret feeling. So quite happy with that change. Also, they've reduced the number of entities you must interact with before advancing the monolith. Without going deep into spoilers here, you have to... Originally, you had to interact with basically every entity to progress through the storyline and reach its conclusion. Now they have lowered the amount of them that you have to do to progress through the story. So in theory, you could finish it without actually seeing every single piece of content, which I think is good. I think they were, they were playing their hand far too hard forcing you to see every single new thing because if you did that then you've seen it all it how many times do you want to play the exact same thing and that's kind of what that was forcing by being able to mix and match that's much more interesting i think there's certain combinations of things that could happen and interact with each other in interesting ways one time you'll get it one time you won't and that also gives you a bit more of a you don't know exactly what you need to do to prepare I think once you've played a couple times, you probably know how to counter everything and you could just pre-counter every single difficulty. Well, now you would be vastly over-preparing if you did that. So I think that is a, another good compromise slash fix on that. Another one, the new scenario, the anomaly scenario, had you start with two researchers and a ghoul, and they've upped that to three researchers and a ghoul. 
Again, this is a good change. In my playthrough that I'm posting on the channel, I've really, really, really felt l a lack of working hands. Uh, the ghoul, while they don't require too much from you, they do kind of require a lot of micromanagement in the early game to keep them fed with raw meat. And so in my game, I felt like all I was doing was micromanaging the ghoul and trying to get something else done in the meantime. I think having that third person there would really, really help. Because think about most games. Okay, one person's researching full time, essentially. You probably have one person doing food in some form or another, basically permanently. And that leaves you one person to maybe do everything else. So starting with only two people really, really slowed that down. Very happy with that change. I think that's going to be great. After that, we have a full change log, which I'm not going to read through. If you'd like to see the full notes, you're welcome to go there and check them out. Good changes all around and a whole boatload of fixes, uh, a few of which I've kind of noticed, a few of which I've read. Good fixes all around, though. I'm glad that they are on top of that. And hopefully we have the promise here at the start, integrating Anomaly more with the rest of the game. That has been I would say my personal secondary pet peeve, and I think a lot of people share that. It feels like there's so many missed opportunities to integrate this content with the things that came before. I thought we had learned that lesson, old man, when we had biotech come out and it felt very jarring that it wasn't integrated with other things. What I would like to see, I think as you study anomalies, you should unlock special uh, side casts based on what an anomaly it is, and not every single one, but there should be a selection of them that have that. There should be a selection that either straight up give you a new gene, or they give you things that you can use to make a new gene. So like, I'm gonna make one up here because I don't wanna give spoilers. Let's say you had an entity that was always on fire. Well, maybe you could get that gene and you could make a fire gene that made your person always on fire. You know, something like that. And I would think that would be a lot more interesting, especially if you're playing a playthrough that is light on anomalies, but it's turned on. And then it would be really cool and special to get something like that. Those interesting rewards that would tie into royalty and biotech. Uh, for Ideologen, they have two precepts or, or two memes that came with it. To me, that was okay. I would have liked to see more. I think going forward, I would like at least one light, medium, and heavy interaction uh, meme from each DLC at a bare minimum. I think that's the amount I would like to see integrated with ideology. And of course, it's always nice to have some new artifacts, new clothing options. If there's a relevant uh, precept that you need, like we needed one for sanguifages, etc., I think those should definitely be included. I understand wanting to wait and see the reception, but I have trouble believing that this was a shock because people were talking about this from the get-go, that what is the integration going to be? I hope there's integration. H how is this going to connect to this system that's already in-game? Because it sounds like it should. I'd also like to see a couple of other things that I feel like are just oversights. Like, why do we not have just a plain double door? If I'm going to have double doors, I'm going to want to structure my whole base around that. Like maybe I'm gonna do two wide hallways and I'd like to have a two wide door at the end of my hallway. And I'm not gonna be able to afford or want the wealth creep of putting an ornate door on every single hallway. I know mods will and probably already have addressed those issues, but I, I think it's lazy design if it's designed with the intention of mods will fix it. And I think in the past, RimWorld has done a pretty good job of putting out something that felt complete and then you could flavor it as like a flavor your baked potato how you'd like. So, you know, maybe you want a little more cheese or a little, you want some olives on it, but you could still just eat your potato and it was good enough. And I hope we're not moving towards, oh, I'm going to put this thing out and then mods will cover all the other things. I do not like that type of design. I feel that that is, that slides it towards lazy. And I think RimWorld's biggest strength is how well mods will allow you to customize and expand your experience with it. Little little bit of a, uh, I don't even want to call it a complaint because I'm not, I'm not at that point yet, but a little worry I have with that. Otherwise, if I had to give my initial impressions, I would say after this post, I would probably give it a neutral to positive. Before this post, I would probably have been forced to give it a thumbs down. Not because it's not good content, 
not because I haven't had some fun with it, but because I didn't think the replayability was there, nor did I feel that it was well integrated with things that were obvious should have been integrated. So I will give them a big thumbs up for addressing those issues. I'd like to see some more soon. Get some more integration in there. Should have been there from the get go, but I'm glad we're getting it fixed. Now my biggest issue is, should I add another uh, pawn to my playthrough that started with only two pawns and a ghoul, or should I just buck up and, and fight through it? I don't know, I'll have to decide on that. All right, uh, if you enjoyed this one, don't forget to leave a like on it, and you should be seeing a link to the playthrough I've started. If you're interested in RimWorld and want to experience some narrative gameplay, I'd love for people to come check that out. Have some fun watching me get eaten alive, probably. All right, take care builders, and I will see you in the next one.